I would like to know, um, there's so many people that claim to be C60 manufacturers, but how many are really real labs in America that you know of? And how many of them are garages and basements or whatever people put together and they're buying from you and just mixing in locations? How many real labs like yours are there to choose from in all these decades? Well, so we've, you know, since 1991, we've stayed on top of the, the fullerene industry uh, from the very beginning. In fact, we're the first company to ever deliver commercial quantities of carbon nanomaterials. Actually, one company beat us, but they didn't even make it six months. They weren't really serious, uh, um, serious scientists who were interested in delivering amazing product to the scientific community. Uh, so we've been selling since 1991. We sell into the harshest environment, I'll say. Uh, it's really collaborative as research scientists. And you also have to realize that when we ship a product to a research scientist, not only do they have the knowledge to know how to test it, they have the equipment to test it. Uh, and so it's a very stringent market where we're selling in and they know how to confirm that we're selling them what we're selling them, which is great for us because we actually sell what we say we sell. So we've been selling into this really kind of harsh environment and we've always stayed on top of who has what because often different research institutions will come out with different derivatives. If you visited our, uh, our website, you would see that there are different derivatives that we might sell. Um, and those uh, sometimes come from uh, other research institutions, sometimes they come from our own lab. Uh, as you look around the landscape around the world, there is all, there is all often, I'm not gonna say always, but often been production in Russia, there's been production in China, there's been minimal production in different research labs around, really around the world. So an individual lab might decide that they wanna do their own C60 research, and so they might make a reactor, in fact, buy a reactor from us, you can buy a reactor, uh, and then actually make their own C60 and use it in their experiments. Since really about 2018, um, the landscape of the market has, uh, you know, absolutely changed, obviously changed. It's really focused on this supplement, the ES, what we call ESS-60 in olive oil. And in mid-2018, uh, we actually started having to use all of our own production in our own olive oil. And what that did is made less C60 available for the general market. Uh, and at the time we were like, well, maybe we can fill this gap by finding a reputable C60 manufacturer or company, uh, in manufacturer uh, somewhere else in the world. So uh, we, we had ruled out Russia because we worked uh, with that particular material and the quality was never up to our standard since 1991. Uh, and then we considered China, which has its own, like inherently has its own challenges because uh, there's been a lot of kind of Chinese scares uh, where China uh, has s sent supplements or in fact baby infant formula uh, that's been dangerous to the health of infants. And so you, 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 we, we went there with, with a concerned hat to begin with uh, and then we met with a number of manufacturers and we actually did testing on their uh, material and we were unhappy with the quality. So, I mean, we could have take it, taken it and processed it, which is time consuming and really wouldn't have worked out in the long run, plus we're apprehensive about working with China. And, and so now what we ended up doing is just, you know, releasing small quantities and just trying to, to keep the industry moving forward until we could increase our production. And you've actually seen our production equipment. Our production equipment is up and running and we're, we're able to produce what we need to to service the market. So that's one thing, like the C60. Where are you getting it? Where's the origin of it? And are you comfortable with it? It's kind of why we came out with ESS60 as being safer for human consumption so that when you see ESS60 on a product, you know that it's safe for you to consume and you know uh, that it's coming from a reputable source because that source is us. The next step is, you know, even though we may be selling ESS60 into different oil manufacturers around the country, how are they manufacturing their oil? We don't have controls on, uh, are they using sonication? By the way, sonication is really bad for oil. Uh, I did a, a, a test uh, once with an oil and that it's on the market and it had a very metallic taste. And actually that taste is proved that they were sonicating it. Didn't say they were sonicating it on their website, uh, but we know that they were. The reason you might wanna try sonication is you can actually speed up the rate at which 
ESS-60 dissolves in an oil. The reason that you shouldn't do sonication is because sonication can severely damage the oil uh, and turn it rancid. And so that's a, that's a big problem. We never sonicate our products. We also found kind of in our manufacturing process, you want to keep it with a nitrogen gas buffer. It can be nitrogen or any in, in, inert gas, uh, but we use a nitrogen gas buffer. Uh, what this does is keep oxygen away from the oil. So you can imagine when you're spinning oil, you tend to create this vortex. Well, that vortex tends to pull in gas and actually fold it into the oil, right? Well, if that gas contains oxygen, then you're actually oxygenating your oil and that's not a good thing. You wanna make sure that you're not doing that. So this nitrogen bath, and it's always under pressure so that our vessels are actually pressurized. It's a low pressure, but pressurized with natural nitrogen gas. Um, we also found that when we went from smaller volumes to larger volumes, we had to mix longer. So our mixing process is a three week process now. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, our people out there that we're selling powder to um, mixing it in their garage, are they mixing it in their kitchen? Are they throwing it in a bottle with a label? Uh, I'm sure they are. Uh, the thing to look for is one ESS 60. And then if you're really like watching this video and you have faith in, in the value of what we're putting out, you should probably just be our customer. We make really good products uh, and we've got good options for you. Olive oil, MCT oil, and, uh, and avocado oil. Uh, so we've got those. Just be mindful, we always recommend olive oil. It's significantly stronger than MCT and, and also stronger than, than avocado oil. But that's, that's kind of my perspective. A, a couple of experiences we've had recently, somebody sent us a note and said, hey, uh, is this a reputable person? Uh, should I buy from them? Actually, I think they had kind of accidentally bought from another company. And, and my reply was, well, I visited that website that website uh, is, is linked to a PO box. It's not actually linked to a physical address or a warehouse where they might be doing manufacturing. Um, and they have no phone number. So this is like kind of standard. If the company looks like a fly by night company, is that really something you want to put in your body? Uh, and then the other thing that was pretty recent, I was on Amazon. I found these tablets that had C6, said, said they had C60. And, and for, for the sake of this discussion, we'll assume that they did have C60 in it. But their recommendation was two pills. And when I did the calculation, our typical recommendation for a dose is five milliliters. In order to get five milliliters, you need 20 pills of those. And it's like a 30 pill bottle. So like you gotta take the whole bottle in order to have one dose. So um, just beware if you're out there looking for other vendors or you know, come to the source.